This is the DJI Air 3S with a number of upgrades including a LiDAR sensor as well as a 1 inch CMOS sensor. We're going to check out in today's video to see how good is this drone for making 3D models via photogrammetry. We're also going to test it in mapping and seeing how well it can create one large image based off a bunch of smaller ones. I'm really excited to check this one out because while it does have a LiDAR sensor and does have some capability to do 3D scanning, that sensor is directly situated straight ahead and is only used for pathfinding for obstacle avoidance. The one inch sensor does add some interest to me, specifically when we're actually going to be using that to capture images, especially in lower light situations. I do think if you've checked out my previous review of this drone where I compare it directly to the Air 3S, I do think that this drone itself is specifically designed for low light recording and low light photography. And I don't think we're gonna see as much of a major difference between the Air 3 and the Air 3S when it comes to daytime photogrammetry. However, at the end of this video, we'll compare it. We'll see how well the results are and see if this really is usable for photogrammetry. Another thing I'd like to point out from previous videos where we used the Air 3 is that the best camera, in my opinion, out of all the current SKU of drones, the Mini 4 Pro, the Mavic 3 Classic Pro, etc., and now the Air family, is the 3X sensor that is found on the Air 3, now the Air 3S, as well as the Mavic 3 Pro. This sensor, in my opinion, does the best when focused on a certain area and looks the best in terms of quality. So the 3X sensor is ideal, especially if you're trying to focus on a certain object. However, if you're trying to capture larger areas, I'm curious on how well this one inch sensor is gonna make a difference. So for the purpose of today's video, we're not gonna take a look at the 3X sensor because it hasn't changed from the Air 3. And instead, we're just going to focus on doing an A and B comparison of the sensor, of the one inch sensor versus the original sensor that's on the Air 3 and also the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So first up, we need to plan our mission. I'm gonna show you the thought process of how we're going to capture an area. We're gonna be using Waypoint Map to go through and plan our mission and autonomously fly this for us. So we're gonna jump over there real quick. So with the DJI Air 3S, we can actually go through and autonomously map locations. That is, we can have the drone fly over it and automatically scan it, which then we would use it for 3D modeling via the process of photogrammetry. So um, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to do that exactly. Um, there's a lot of different options. I'm gonna to try to show you all the different tools that you can use. This is using a tool called Waypoint Map, something that I wrote, and it allows you to basically set flight plans and all that, and it works entirely with the Air 3S. So first up, we have a couple different tools up here. We have one which is a polygon tool that allows you to go through and kind of select an area that you want to map and then have it go through and generate those shapes and then it will fly back and forth and do as such. However, I think for this option specifically, I think it's best to go with a circle and then we can also go through and generate these shapes. And as you can see, it will generate a circle and it will take all those pictures looking down at the center here, which is actually really good for us because then that allows us to get a good full 360 view from a very consistent spot on the map. Now each of these points as well you can edit. So for example, if we want to move this one out here a little bit, we can have the drone fly out here and then move it back here if we want. Um, also, I think it's best that we go through and we make another circle a little closer and then that way we have a bunch of different points. Now this is like, like 124 points. That's a lot of points, but as you can see the gimbal angle is going to be down slightly but it should work good for us. And then once we're done here, we can just go through down here and download the KMZ file. Now I have some premium features, so I'm gonna go through and regenerate these with having an action for each shape, which basically means that I want to take a picture each time it hits one of these points. So we'll hit generate and then we'll do the same thing here. So then that way we're good. A whole set of points around this location. And then I'm gonna download the final KMZ file. So I also wanna go through and create a overhead map, basically one big picture that shows this entire field. And I wanna see how well that looks on the Air 3S. Now, in order to do that, I'm just gonna go through and use the rectangle tool and I'm going to select around the whole field effectively. So that way the drone will basically fly all through this and we'll get a bunch of good pictures. And then we can throw it into aerial model and collect 
all this. I'm going to have it generate all the points and I'm going to have it generate them with take picture and we're going to set the gimbal angle to 90 degrees downward. That way it will go through, take all the pictures and everything else like that looks good. So then we're going to get this wonderful little thing here. We're going to get 300 some points, which luckily we have the DJI RCN3, which has my iPhone in there. So we should be able to fly all these points as well. So with that being said, let's see what's the time that it estimates on. It's going to take about 24 minutes and that looks good. I'm going to download this and get this loaded up into my phone. So while we wait for this to go fly, I'm also just going to throw out a couple additional photogrammetry tips that you should be aware of. Number one is that wide angle lenses for some reason usually result in much higher quality models. If you get like the DJI wide angle lens or maybe a third party wide angle lens, it for some reason it just makes it a lot easier to capture models. One of the common mistakes that we make is that we fly a little bit too low to the ground or too low to the subject. And then when we go through and we try to create the 3D model, um, it doesn't turn out well. So having a wide angle lens effectively puts you a little bit farther away and also increases the overlap between the images or what's the same between the images so that the photogrammetry software can actually go through and create a 3D model better. So basically now we're just going to wait for it to go fly the mission and the great part about waypoint map and especially with these modern drones is that we can have this mission run fully autonomously and we don't have to control anything so you can go work on something else while it flies and you don't have to spend all this time manually controlling the drone. So I'm going to wait for it to finish up and then we're going to load up all the pictures into aerial model and get those processing so then we can preview them and see what the final model looks like. I went through and I basically flew two different flight plans. One was basically trying to do an overhead capture, which was effectively trying to capture as many images from an overhead point of view so that I could create a single ortho from that. And then on the inverse of that is just doing a 360 fly around. And as you can see, the results are about the same. I'm going to bump the point budget up on both of these so that it's a little higher than um, we're used to. And as you can see, you definitely can tell that this was not perfect, but at the same time, it did fly around and do a pretty good job capturing. As you can see here, this is much higher quality and detailed on the top here. And if we really wanted to capture some of these underlying portions here, we would probably do a combination of both, preferably one that's a little closer on the building. And as you can see, I think just because this is less images, because the circle has less images, um, it's not the best. And then we look at this, this has a little bit better job capturing the roofs and stuff, which actually did a surprisingly really good job on some of these. So I think overall that looks the best. And we can come over here to these trees and these trees even got captured to a good enough degree as well. So even the fence, look at the fence got captured, wow. So I think overall it definitely looks really good and this looks really good for orthos. So we'll check out the orthos in a sec. But that looks like a really solid quality model. So I think if you were had the time and the resources to go, because I think this took like 30 minutes to fly versus this took like seven. So it just depends on how much time you have and what detail you need. I think for most people, this would probably be okay. But then going up higher, I think we'd probably want to capture some more images. Overall, this quality, I think really the only place that the quality really starts standing out versus or over the Air 3 was in these darker areas. We'll talk a lot about just checking out the noise. Um, and as you can see here, I think that the image sensor is a little larger, so you can capture a little bit more detail. And it looks like there is some better capture of noise here. It looks like it's doing a better job at least recognizing some of these darker areas and not having as much noise in these areas as well. But overall, I think that's pretty solid. I think both of these models turned out really good. And I'm going to have a link to everything down below. So you can check these out whenever you'd like. Um, and these links will be available for you to check these out, download these models, etc., or take a look at them as well. So let's jump over. Let's take a look at the ortho now and see how good that looks like. And so here we have the final 800 megapixel image. And this I converted into a PNG from the downloaded aerial model TIFF. Uh, so effectively, I loaded everything in aerial model, had an optimization for uh, creating an ortho, and now I have downloaded this massive image, which for context, again, this is literally like an 800 megapixel image. 
And so we can go from this all the way down to see the individual little loops on the bases. So we can see just how much detail is captured um, versus this. Now, what I'm really looking for is the noise in these dark situations. So I don't think that's necessarily noise. And also, I realized as well doing this that the DJI Air 3S actually does have a limitation on how fast you can take the pictures. So even though in our flight plan we had optimized specifically to take a lot of pictures, we should have slowed it down a little bit more because it didn't have enough time to capture um, enough images. It wasn't capturing them in the grid pattern. Instead, it was just capturing them off, and that resulted in having some dis you know, disconnections here. I think actually in a couple other places. So if I was going to do this again, I would either switch to 12 megapixels so I could capture more images, but at the same time, you know, this, these details are very, very precise and you can actually see a lot more than you would in a 12 megapixel image. So I think utilizing this, we would probably want to drop that down. So I think realistically, we would probably want to drop it down if we were just trying to capture and get rid of some of these disconnections or we could drop down the speed as well because you can see there are some issues here but in situations where it's dark we don't see a lot of noise which is good and I think a lot of this is just part of the texture on the individual ground there so we can try to look around here as you can see we still capture a pretty good bit of detail here and not so much noise I do think it does get a little less clear here but overall I really, really do think this image turned out good. And, you know, just zooming out here, this looks like you know, super impressive. So very happy with the results. We can get really detailed. And I think the 50 megapixel definitely resulted in a really high quality picture. Compared to the Air 3, I'm definitely noticing a lot less noise in some of these darker areas. I honestly couldn't tell you any noise. I don't see any noise. And I want to make sure I'm not pointing out, like, that's what it looks like it's just all the ground. Like, these blacks look really black. And there's nothing really in there in terms of noise. Um, is there anywhere else I can look? All the dark areas look really good. We got some nice dynamic range. Even the super light areas here were captured rather well. So a friendly reminder, if you want to see the regular drone differences between this and the Air 3, I did a full comparison slash review video on Sponsored. And you can check that out there and see which drone is better or what you would need that for. Also, based off the results of today's video, I'd say you could, if you could get an Air 3 cheaper, it's not that big of a deal. I do like the added additional bonus of the hot obstacle avoidance on the front, and the 1-inch sensor does make it a little easier for flying at darker situations. Anyway, all of the current drones out there are great options for photogrammetry if you're an entry level, especially with the autonomous mission planning you can get on any of the modern drones with Waypoint Map. So, I want to thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos on this channel for all the reviews about all the photogrammetry capabilities on the Mini 4 Pro, Mavic 3s, and the Air 3, and now we have the Air 3S. I have also have a couple other drones that I've done videos testing the photogrammetry capabilities of, and I have a couple more as well that I'm working on right now. So thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, and see you next time.